Okay, lesson 44 for you guys. 44 is a couple of different things. If you guys recall, we already talked about the chain rule previously. And so we're going to talk about the chain rule some more. I'm going to kind of show you a different way to do the chain rule that will maybe help you understand the chain rule a little bit better. Um, but you can still go back to the other way, too. And then we're also going to talk about some other definitions of derivative. We already have our basic definition of derivative, the limit. These are just some other variations of it. So as we start off, um, chain rule up top there. Okay, so you'll notice it says dy dx, so it's in the derivative of f of g of x. And how we looked at it previously is here, where it's the derivative of the outside, keep the inside the same, right, times the derivative of the inside. The way we're looking at it today, and so what I'm going to write here is the idea of another way to find dy dx. And you'll notice there are, and well, they're not all u's and v's in these problems, are they? But, oh, I'll write this, I'll do dy <coughs> du times du dx. So the idea that if we're trying to find the derivative, of two pieces, and you'll notice today the pieces are not put together, but that we can use derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. What we're going to have is we're going to have two pieces that are not put together and using the chain rule before we put them together. Um, on this first example, I'm going to show both ways. So I can kind of show you what we've done in the past versus what we're doing today, and you can, it's not that you have to use this way, it's just you can, you know, it's more options, more ideas, okay? So, as we look at the first example, we have a y equation in terms of u, so let y equal u squared plus 4u, and we have a u equation in terms of x, so u equals 5x cubed. Notice what it's asking me to find, though. It's still asking me to find dy dx, okay? So, um, as it's asking me to find dy dx, we're going to start by finding the derivatives of each of these. So this first equation is y equals in terms of u. So we're going to find um, dy, since it's in terms of u, dy du. So what is dy du? dy du is going to be 2u plus plus 4 u equals 5x cubed. What are we doing there? What was it? If this is u in terms of x, we can find du dx. What is du dx? 15x squared. Now, the idea here is we're being asked to find dy dx. Notice, we have a dy du, a du dx. What helps, happens when you multiply dy du and du dx? The du's will cancel, and you'll be able to have dy dx. The, let's see, how do I want to write this out? They're asking me to find dy dx. I'm off the screen. There we go. So we have here dy du times du dx. So do you see how dy du times du dx can become dy dx? That's a lot of d's in there. But the idea that the du's can cancel. So if we multiply those pieces together, dy du is 2u plus 4. DU DX is 15x squared. Now, the one issue we have is that they're asking us to find DY DX. This needs to be in terms of X. Right now, we still have an, a U in there. 
What do you know about you? We were given that u is 5x cubed. So right there, we can replace that and then finish this off. So now it becomes 2 times 5x cubed, so 10x cubed plus 4 times 15x squared. Multiply that out, and what do we have? Hundred and fifty x to the fifth plus. I'm gonna do the other variation of the problem right up here. Is all I'm gonna do. I just don't have quite enough room to write it all the way off to the side. I don't think so. Plus, what's my last term? Sixty x squared. Mm-hmm. Now, again, the part that makes this weird is we were given y and u equations, um, and u was the one that was in terms of x. Another way to do this that might seem a little more, I don't know if I want to use the word normal, but if they want us to find dy dx, that means they want us to find the derivative of y with respect to x. That means we need a y equal equation that is in terms of x. Your other option is here, we could have combined these two equations first and then find the derivative. Do you understand what I mean when I say combine these? If y is u squared plus 4u and u is 5x cubed, plug it in, take the derivative. Okay? So y equals, if it's u squared plus 4u, that means I'm doing 5x cubed squared plus 4 times u, so 4 times 5x cubed. If you multiply that out and clean it up, what's 5x cubed quantity squared? 25x to the... No? Sixth. Well, it's the third and we square it, it becomes... Raised to a power of 2, it's a 6. Plus 4 times 5, so 20x cubed. So now you have an equation that is a y equals. It's in terms of x. And so at that point, you can just do dy dx. Derivative of y with respect to x. What's the derivative of 25x to the 6? 6 times 25 is 150. Then x to the 5th plus derivative of 20x to the third, 60x squared. Okay, that's kind of the check there. Um, I'll be honest, I'm going to kind of use the other version on these next two examples to just kind of get a feel for it. This is probably more what you're used to. I'm okay with, I mean, <laughs> the idea is you need to know how to do these problems. Okay, if this is more your comfort zone when you go through homework, I don't see any reason you can't do that, okay? But again, I just want you guys to be familiar with this way, which is why I'm showing, okay? I don't think it would matter. I think I would accept it either way, unless there's something weird in the directions. I don't I think what if... I think you'd probably be okay either way. I just say I think because I hesitate to say yeah. for sure without having looking, you know. I'm just working on having the test ready to go for later this week. That would be a whole other test or so down the road, so. Okay, questions there? Okay. Let's try example two then. Let y equals two times the natural log of v and v equals u squared, they want us to find dy du. So they want us to find the derivative of y with respect to u. Now, 
I'm going to go the other direction that I went earlier. In that, let's find the derivative of each of these and then combine them. Okay? I'm not saying you couldn't substitute that in and go that way also. Um, you just have to watch out for change rule, I think, is the key. So, okay, if this is y equals 2 ln v, what am I finding when I take the derivative? It's the derivative of y with respect to v. So that means when I take the derivative of this first equation, it's dy dv. So what is the derivative of 2 ln v? 2 over v. Because 2 stays 2, the derivative of natural log of something is 1 over the something. So 2 over v. v equals u squared. When I find the derivative of that, what is that? That's the derivative of v with respect to u. So that means I'm be finding dv du. And be careful how you write your v's and u's. They're hard to have in the same problem. I've been having to like, really distinguish just between the u and the y. It, uh, yeah. Because okay. when the y is on top of the fraction, the tail It does. Like yeah, my tail is kind of there. What is the derivative of u squared? 2u. Two. Two okay. So now, we're being asked to find dy du. So will this work? If I'm trying to find dy du, what happens if I do dy dv times dv du? The dv's cancel, and I would have dy du, yes? Okay, so let's multiply our pieces. It's 2 over v times 2u. Now, what variable do I want my answers, my answer in terms of? If I'm being asked to find dy du, I should have all u's in the problem. I have a v in the problem. What do I know about v? It's u squared. So I can replace that. And so now it's 2 over u squared times 2u. What is 2 over u squared times 2u? Okay. 4u over u squared. What is 4u over u squared if we simplify it? 4 over u. The exact problem? Well, like in general, but the two over v kind of sparked my. I don't know. I'm not going to deny or not deny. I don't know. Okay, let's try one more of these, and we can do some definition of derivatives. Let y equals sine t, and t is 1 over the square root of x. What is dy dx? So what do you know about y equals sine t? Okay, you're finding dy dt. And what is the derivative of sine t? Cosine t. Or cost, as some of you are saying, I'm sure. I try not to, but I get it. It's tempting. Okay, what do you know about t equals 1 over the square root of x? Okay, so 1 over the square root of x, remember, is the same as x to the negative 1 half, because the square root of x is x to the 1 half. It's in the denominator, so it's negative. We find this derivative, we're finding dt over dx. What is dt dx? Okay. 
Okay. Move your power. Your power comes multiplies out front, so negative one half x. Subtract one from your power. Negative a half minus one is negative three halves. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave it like that. So we're trying to find dy dx again. And we have dy dt and dt dx. Does it work when I multiply them? I'm always going to check before I continue, right? My dt's will cancel and I'll have dy dx, which is what I want. So let me sub in the pieces here. I'm going to have cosine of t times negative one half x to the negative three halves. What do you know? Yeah. I have t and x. Let's get it so we have all one variable. And we know that t is 1 over square root of x. So I can replace that. So now instead of cosine t, it's going to be cosine of, you can write it as x to negative 1 half. Or I was just going to do 1 over square root of x. You could write either way. I don't care. Times negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves. There's not really cleanup to do there other than, to me, it would be more natural to have the x out front. But that's not even necessarily a requirement. That's just, you know, a little better looking. So I'm going to say dy dx is negative one-half, I'm just going to leave it as x to the negative three-halves, cosine one over square root of x. <clears throat> now, if you're doing things the other way, you should be getting matching answers. Okay. Some of these are easier than others to do them the other way. You'll find that out. Questions on that section? Okay. Um, part B. Definition of the derivative. We already know two forms of the derivative, yes? Although if you ask me, they're the same. I think this we know one. The difference is one uses delta x, the other uses h. So the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. Limit as h approaches zero, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. They're interchangeable. You can use them as you want, right? Well, we now have a third form of the derivative we're going to use. And more importantly than using, you need to be able to recognize it. Okay, I remember doing an AP calculus practice problem, like an AP test practice problem, and this form of the derivative was in there. Okay, so we're going to practice this one on the back. The limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. Okay. So let's flip to the back, and you'll notice that first example says use the alternate definition. There are a lot of different definitions. So I'm going to write down my definition right here. So f prime of a is the limit as x approaches a f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. Okay, so that's definition just copied from the front side. 
Okay, we're finding f prime of a where f of x equals x squared plus 1 and a is some constant. So, first of all, the first thing I'm going to write, limit. Okay, your definition derivative is not complete if you don't throw that limit in there. So the limit as x approaches a, and it is going to stay x approaches a because they're asking me to find f prime of a. Okay, if this a was something else, we would use something different here. On top, f of x. What is f of x? x squared plus 1 they gave me. It's off the page over here. So x squared plus 1. Minus f of a. What do I mean when I say f of a? Okay. Or we're trying to find f prime of a, but... If f of x, yeah, if f of x is x squared plus 1, f of a is just plugging a in here. So if f of x is x squared plus 1, f of a, every place you see an x, you replace it with a. So that is a squared plus 1. Does that help? So I'm going to be subtracting, and I'm going to put it in parentheses. I'm going to say minus the quantity a squared plus 1. I heard Jack say minus a squared minus 1. Whichever one makes you happy there. They're the same. I get it. I don't care. I'm just not distributing the minus yet. My denominator is x minus a. Well, what are we finding? f prime of a. So it's still just an a. Okay, I'll show you some other examples where they ask you to find something different. You have to put a different number in there. Okay, I'm going to rewrite limit, because so I write that every step. The limit as x approaches a, what happens on top? Yeah. 1 minus 1 cancel. I have x squared minus a squared over x minus a. We do factor. That numerator factors, guys. The key is can you catch it? <laughs> x squared minus a squared. What if I said x squared minus 25? Could you factor x squared minus 25? What's x squared minus 25? x minus 5 and x plus 5 when you factor it into two parentheses. What's x squared minus a squared factor into? x plus a, x minus a. My denominator is already in x minus a. What do you notice? Yeah, x minus a is canceled. So I'm going to write limit one more time. It still is x approaches a. And this time all I have left is x plus a. So the limit as x approaches a of x plus a. How do I actually take that limit? We plug in a for x. So instead of x plus a, it's a plus a. And a plus a is 2a. Think about it. Can you check yourself? The derivative of f of x, the derivative of x squared is 2x. So f prime of a means you plug a in for x. 2 times x becomes 2 times a, which is 2a. I'm getting a, look, I'm getting an evil look from some of you guys. I'm assuming you want us to show it. If it says it, you show it. Yep. <laughs> If it says, and this one said, use the alternate definition of derivative, that means you don't get to just take the derivative of using the power rule. Okay. I thought Carly was giving me an evil eye, like, really? We just did all that work, and it was a basic derivative. So. I'm laughing because you went, or what'd you say? I'm assuming you wanted to show a story, and your voice just went, 
then went back down. He went, what? I'm assuming you want us to show it. I don't even know. I'm assuming you want to Okay, show let's try example five. But yes, I was giving you that one for that. Thank you much, my dear. Okay, example five. Use the alternate form. So that piece that was up here, guess what? We're using it again. This time, f of x is x squared. And this time we're being asked to find f prime of 1. So derivative at 1. So, for me, what I'm going to do, instead of saying f prime of a, we're trying to find f prime of 1. So, every place that was an a is now a 1. So, it was the limit as x approaches a. I'm going to say the limit as x approaches 1 this time. f of x minus f of a. So f of x, what is f of x? f of x is, no, just f of x is given as x squared minus. Now it says f of a up there, but what is my a value? 1. So what's f of 1? That means you plug 1 in and it's going to be 1 squared. Yes, I wrote 1 squared. If you just write 1, that's fine. Okay. Wait, would it be the x squared plus 1? Okay, we're on example 5. Our given function here is x squared. Oh, yeah, it's going to be x squared minus 1, yeah. I just. I was thinking like the negative one times negative one. No. Okay. Over x minus a. So in this case, it's x minus. What's my a value? One. Okay. And I don't know. Would it help if you know the idea is we did f of x minus f of one over x minus one. That's what we are trying to do there. I don't know, maybe I should have said that first. Okay. Clean up the limit as x approaches 1. x squared minus 1 squared is just x squared <coughs> minus 1 over x minus 1. What can I do here? Yeah. x squared minus 1 factors. So it's the limit. As x approaches 1, x plus 1 times x minus 1 all over x minus 1. The x minus 1s will cancel. I have the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 1. To take that limit, you... Substitute the 1 in, <coughs> and we have as an answer 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. Can you check yourself again? If f of x is x squared, f prime, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and then it's at 1, so you plug the 1 in, 2 times 1 is 2. Okay. Thank you much. Hey guys. Oh yeah, thanks for reminding him. Did he listen to you? Can I stop him in the hallway? You can just minute. It's possible he's going back to get it. He didn't have it finished or didn't have it with him. So, okay. <laughs> Example six, last one. Assume f of x equals the cube root of x. Use the alternate form of the derivative to find f prime of negative 1. You ready? 
Okay, so we're being asked to find f prime of negative 1. You ready? The limit as x approaches what? Negative 1. Good. f of x on top, which is cube root of x minus f of what? Normally it says f of a. Our a value is negative 1. So f of negative 1 means the cube root of negative 1. I'll clean that up in my next step. Over x minus a. So that's x minus, what's my a value again? Negative 1. Okay, clean up time. The limit as x approaches negative 1. Cube root of x, I'm actually going to, what is that um, with an exponent? I'm going to write it there. x to the 1 third. Minus, what's the cube root of negative 1? Negative 1. So what's minus a negative 1? Plus 1. So x cubed plus 1 over x minus negative 1, which is x plus 1. Okay. If you were to plug in negative 1 right now, we would get 0 over 0. And that's not an option. Okay? What if I say it's possible to factor this? <laughs> okay. We are going to use the idea of factoring... Um, sum and difference of cubes, which is where you're factoring into a binomial or a trinomial. The challenge is this has the fraction exponents, which makes it definitely more of a challenge. Okay, so let me write down. I'm just rewriting my limit here. The limit as x approaches negative 1 of x to the 1 third plus 1 over, now, and actually what it is, is it's my, I guess I didn't specify, it's my denominator that's going to focus. Now, this is x, yes? If I say that this is a perfect cube, what is x a perfect cube of? Well, okay, so, but my power is just x to the first. So if I take the cube root of x to the first, it's just cube root of x. Or in other words, x to one third. So what I'm trying to lead you to is I'm going to rewrite this as x to the one third raised to the third plus one. And again, my reasoning is I'm going to factor this denominator and I'll have a factor cancel. Did I expect you to jump to that on your own? No. As Cassie's over there staring out, like really? Okay. So all I did. This is x to the first, yes? This is still x to the first, but in a different looking. It just looks different. Because x to the one-third raised to three. When we raise a power to a power, we multiply. One-third times three is one. So this is still x to the first. It just looks different. Not exactly. We had, so I'm going to rewrite this limit as x approaches negative 1. My numerator is still that lovely x to the 1 third plus 1. Okay, um, I think it was back in like day 1, day 2. Remember f cubed plus s cubed, where it factors into f plus s and f squared minus fs. Whoops. I promise you it's back in like lesson one or two. No. It's just a single FS. <laughs> he asked if we needed to on the FS. Okay, so 
F kind of, FS kind of, F is for first, S is for second. And so F plus S is the cube root. The cube root of the first term, the cube root of the second term. F squared is that cube root squared minus FS are the two cube roots multiplied together. Come on. Plus S squared is plus the last term squared. We've done this with nice near numbers before. Now we have to do it with these fractions. Okay, so the binomial is the cube roots. X to the one-third raised to the third. What am I trying to set it up that this is, is the cube root? Some, the cube root of something raised to the third is this something right here. So X to the one. In other words, I guess originally it was X, right? What was the cube root of X? Cube root of X is cube root of X or X to the one third. It's a plus here, so we write plus. What's the cube root of one? One. Are we okay with that at least? No. I can tell I'm struggling to sell this. I'm trying, but it's a struggle. I can tell. Okay. F squared means we take this cube root here. So we take x to the one-third and we square it. So x to the one-third squared means one-third raised to the second. So one-third times two is two-thirds. So x to the two-thirds, we change the sign, it's minus these two cube roots multiplied. So x to the one-third times one is just x to the one-third. And then plus s squared is plus this last cube root squared. And one squared is just one. Now. As ugly and as horrible as that was, what was the point of that? X to one third plus one cancels with X to one third plus one. And so I now have the limit as X approaches negative one of one over X to two thirds minus X to one third plus one. Final step is to plug in negative 1. So it's 1 on top. X to the 2 thirds. Remember the denominator 3 says take the cube root. The numerator of 2 says to square it. So the cube root of negative 1 is cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared becomes positive 1. Minus cube root of negative 1. Well, cube root of 1 is 1. Cube root of a negative is a negative 1. And then there's already a plus 1 here. What do I end up with here? 1 over 1 plus 1 plus 1, 1 third. That was a not fun use of this definition of the derivative. It was, I know. I'm not going to argue that. And I get it, it's a rough sale. And if you run into anything similar like this, I get that we're going to be going through it. Okay. Questions that I can answer? So what type of thing? What did you just say? Just say it's simple. Yeah, you did. <laughs> well, probably minus the factoring part. Well, yeah, the, that last one was a problem. Like, like the other two. The main concept. Uh, yeah, I thought you meant yeah. that one that we just did. You're like, yeah. No, I don't remember any of that. I don't Are we okay with the concept in general? Yeah. Minus yeah. the last one that I kind of killed you guys with. Uh -huh. I just don't enjoy the fractions, is what it is. Unfortunately, reality. Yeah. 
Life is not all about whole numbers and positives. I know. We all wish it was. The math teacher wishes it was. It'd be a lot easier to teach math if I didn't, you know, I didn't have to stress you guys with fractions and negatives. And, okay. One last example. We have one last definition of derivative. This is called the symmetric derivative. Okay. It's another definition of derivative, though, but it's symmetric. This is specific again. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x minus h all over 2h. Let's do it. We've got one example to practice with here. Use the, notice it specifically says, symmetric derivative to find f prime of x when f of x equals x squared plus 15. So, f prime of x equals, first thing I'm going to write is limit as h approaches 0. Now, it specifically says, okay, f of x plus h. I don't know, do we have this concept yet or not? What is f of x plus h? Not exactly. So it's not the simple. Okay. <laughs> the function is f of x equals x squared plus 15. Yes. That's the given function. Agree? Uh -huh. Okay. So f of x plus h says every place I see in x, we're going to replace it with x plus h. So where do we see our x? Right there. So we're going to put in x plus h quantity squared plus 15. That's what that means. Yeah, you guys, you guys have a tendency, you guys want to stick the h on the end, but it has to go with the x. And I say you guys because it's not just one of you, it's multiples of you. So, okay, so f of x plus h is x plus h squared plus 15. Minus, now can we do f of x minus h then? It's minus, and I'm going to use parentheses for the quantity. If this was x plus h squared plus 15, this is going to be x minus h squared plus 15. Now, I use parentheses around all of that because that whole thing is being subtracted all over 2h. I'm teaching quadratic formula today. I feel like all over 2a. No. Okay. Clean up. Yeah. <laughs> Limit as h approaches 0. X plus H squared. Foil, please. X squared. Okay, I'm with that. X squared. That's XH plus XH, so 2XH, or 2HX, whichever. Plus H squared. Still A. Plus 15 hanging around, right? Now, this next one, we have to do x minus h squared. Can you guys subtract it at the same time? It would normally be what? Plus x squared. But we're going to subtract it, so we're going to say minus x squared. It would normally be minus 2hx. So we're going to say plus 2hx. It would normally, minus h times minus h would be plus h squared. So we're going to say minus h squared. And it's normally a plus 15. So I'm going to say minus 15. All over 2h. <laughs> because you didn't make it long enough. Yeah. And so, well, good news is you don't need anything long this time. Okay, guys, what do you see? 
x squared minus x squared, h squared minus h squared, 15 minus 15. So you just have the 2hx plus 2hx is 4hx all over 2h. And the good news on that is that h cancels. So it's the limit as h approaches 0 of 4x over 2. Yeah, I'm not sure why I didn't simplify it. I wrote the 4x and I was like, over 2. Okay, yes, you should simplify that. Math teacher fail. I just looked at my notes. I'm like, I did simplify it too. I was like, oh no, I got the simplest thing on. Okay, now. I'll simplify it as I take the limit. H approaches zero. That means we put zero in for H. There is no H, so it's just two X. And does that check with what you expected the derivative to be five minutes ago? Yes. Derivative of X squared plus 15 is two X. Okay. What are what? It's a bit of a struggle in a few places. <laughs>